What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers. Wanted to do a really quick update here. This company's reporting earnings after the close, and in my opinion, I personally wouldn't invest into it. But again, that is just my opinion. This is not financial advice, but let's take a quick look here. AST Space Mobile Incorporated, ticker symbol ASTS, listed here on the NASDAQ. Stock 237 a share, down 14 cents, roughly 5.5% here on the day. Looks like uh, we're in this little upward consolidation zone here, which uh, technically, technical analysis may lead to a breakdown to the downside. And we also have here about a week ago, Monday, May 6th, we hit a high here of 260, top left of the screen, the O to H to L to C, that is the open, the high, the low, the close. You can see a high of 260 here, rejected off of that fib, came down, came back up today, hit a high of 260 forming a double top we have a big pullback here about five six percent and we're staying inside the zone so this company again looking to launch satellites for direct to device uh capabilities i honestly i i honestly don't even understand what this whole situation is about however it's it's good to follow the money of course and this company actually isn't making any money but as you see apparently they're getting sued for everything they have by about 18 different firms but also here we can see business update first thing only space-based cellular broadband network so i mean you know everyone's still kind of pumped about this stock but again all of the uh, the production itself got delayed, and now the launch got delayed. Uh, so I filed a claim. Yep, fell 23%. Production delay. That's production delays for five block one Bluebird satellites due to supplier issues. The launch of these satellites was postponed from the first quarter to July to August of 2024. So again, in my opinion, got about two, three months at least. I, I still see no urgency in the moment to uh, to step into this this stock. Accusing them of misleading about the following details. Pfft, great. That's there's a reason to spend space about misleading about uh, satellite production and hid the suppliers' issues. That is not a good sign. However, most people still are bullish on it, as you see here, maintained by a Deutsche Bank. Price target $19 a share from 23. Uh, in my opinion, it might take a year or two to get to 19 because they're actually going to have to, you know, like launch their satellites and generate revenue and, uh, you know, what's it called? Uh, what, what am I, what are the words I'm looking for? Oh, yes, actually do business, right? Until we're doing business, we don't have value. That is the way I look at it. And um, at the risk of being too forward, when we do look at a lot of these companies who are doing little or no revenue, and I say, in my opinion, we can chunk down, we can sell off easily, the stock could drop 30, 40, 60% from these levels. Again, not to pat myself on the back, but if we go back, I, I am much more right than I am wrong when, when I speak about these situations. And of course, anything can happen, right? The company could come out and say, oh, now we're ahead of schedule and the stock could shoot up to $4. Again, I, I'm not involved in this company. I don't have the ability to short shares right now or anything like that. So I don't, again, I don't want you guys to think, uh, you know, I'm just bashing your, your situation here. I'm wishing you all the best. I hope they do come out and say something great and the stock explodes back up to where you bought it. Uh, I really do hope. If you own this, uh, you know, up here at like 4 or $5 a share and you're considering, you know, adding, lowering the cost basis. Very, very understandable. But in my opinion, I do think it eventually breaks this channel. And we pull back to about here. I'm looking for anywhere from 180 to about 190 right here about this FIB level on the one year, 189. In my eyes, that would be justified. Scotia Bank maintains sector outperform. Price target cut from 750 to 740. That's a little more realistic. And again, once they actually announce, oh, hey, listen, we're launching the satellites. Oh, hey, listen, we got, you know, a deal now with this company. And, uh, you know, we have uh, this company who wants to use our satellites. Yeah, now we're talking about a completely different story and we can start climbing to the fours and the fives and whatnot. So 740, understandable, but obviously it's going to take a little bit longer than everyone uh, anticipated. Why aren't we loading? I'm looking for, there we go, further back news here. This was from April 1st. 
Let's see. It's been a busy and exciting start to 24, right? Of course. What else are they going to say? Well positioned to lead the charge and bridging the digital divide, right? Of course. And this is why, in my opinion, the stock hasn't completely been taken to the shed, right? We have key investments, commercial agreements with AT&T, Google, Vodafone, and the United States government. So I understand if this stock doesn't completely tank to a market cap of like 100 million. But right now, the market cap's about 600 million. And in my opinion, this could easily take about a 20, 25% haircut, even from this level. Uh, this was expected to re produce initial revenue in Q1 of 24. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. But we speak about the delays. Was it this? Yeah, they, yeah FCC voted 5-0. Sure, of course. We will now be able to manufacture in-house or through third parties using our own IP, approximately 95% of all satellite subsystems for our next generation Block 2 Bluebird satellites. Okay, I guess that's good news. Five Block 1 Bluebird satellites expected to be transported, okay? Not even there yet. Expected to be transported from our assembly facilities to the launch site between July and August of 2024, that is two to three months from now before the satellites even get there, then they have to be launched, then you have to hope that obviously the launch goes well and nothing explodes or anything like that, and then maybe the next quarter they may start signing deals and generate generating revenue off of said satellites that are launched again two to three months from today. So in my opinion, again, I have to go on record and say that I feel... There is no urgency in the moment to own this stock. They are bleeding. Cash has dropped significantly. Debt has been increasing. Um, liability, uh, excuse me, assets are actually down. Liabilities are up big, which means equity is down, which means book value is down. But the next generation, Block 2 Bluebird Satellite, with a contractual launch window from December 24 to March 25 right? And this is another thing I never understood about companies like this, right? You, you had supplier delays, you, you had launch delays, now you're finally sending these uh, Block 1 satellites over and you're trying to get them launched by the end of 24, but then at the very end of 24, going into 25, you're already looking for your, your next generation satellite to be launched. Like, like I, I, I don't know. In, in my opinion, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I mean, you know, you're working on the next gen when, when, when the current gen isn't really operational yet. I, I don't know. Perhaps, you know, I, perhaps I didn't look into it enough. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of doing a broad overview here, looking at the broad strokes of this company. But I, I'm telling you right now, you guys know I'm always honest with you. You know, I, I, I used to be a licensed broker. And I used to make roughly six to 700 phone calls a day. And I would call people like you. And I would talk about um obviously i would talk about a stock i would talk about myself and i would try to open an account right but the difference is the, t the two stocks that i pitched full disclosure was take two interactive and cboe the chicago board of options exchange and they each kind of had their own niche right and again i'm talking many many years ago i'm talking like 10 years ago before these stocks really started to grow in value. And if you go back, something like Take Two, it was like, you know, like nine, uh, 11. I, I pitched that I think between like, uh, like eight and like 17, like when it went on that first rally coming out of the, coming out of those low levels. I think it got up to like 17, 1750, if memory serves correct. But long story short, when, when I would call people up and I would speak about Take Two, it, it had a lot of juice behind it right and and of course if you guys seen the wolf of wall street right they you remember leo he talks about uh uh sh like showing urgency in the situation right you you have to make it seem like it's an urgent situation that they have to get involved with now and you know a, a lot of the times it might not be it might just sound good to be honest but also on the flip side there are many situations where there could be a significant level of urgency like, oh, Mr. Jones, in my opinion, you got to get in this now before the new contract comes in and the stock starts to climb, right? 
or oh they're supposedly you know in the middle of a lawsuit maybe something like a fubo right we could talk about fubo hey listen i know some metrics are up some metrics are down but the subs are growing nicely the revenues growing nicely we we had three people team up to try to you know compete with them and there's a lawsuit looming right now so if the settlement comes into fubo's direction it's going to move even higher than it would off its own merits of it of its subs and off its revenue right so if i called you up with something like a fubo you would kind of understand a small level of urgency cboe kind of a different animal that was more of like a safe secure investment now granted there was a lot of consolidation with the publicly traded exchanges if you go back over the years a lot of consolidation over the years so of course there was like that urgency like oh hey mr jones they could get bought out you might want to get in now right but also at the same time when i was uh when i was calling people with cboe they uh they were public for like almost two years and they haven't they they didn't miss earnings that entire time up until that point but the stock wasn't moving so it was almost like a perfect scenario, right? They, they overpriced themselves at the IPO, so we were like slowly ticking downward, but the entire time the company was knocking earnings out of the park, options volume kept increasing, which translated to more transactional fees for CBOE. So, right? So think about it. So if you were to get a phone call from me with one or with one of those two stocks, whether you trusted me or not, it, it you you would understand why i was on the phone with you you would understand why i was passionate or why i was adamant about you potentially giving me a shot on that day with that stock something like asts here if i had if i was still a broker and my analyst came in and said hey you know you you should you should talk about asts for your clients or potentially new clients uh in my opinion i wouldn't do it in my opinion i wouldn't do it because again, of course, I could call you up and say, oh, this is going to be huge. One day, eventually, when they launch their satellites, you know, look at the people they're working with. They got investments from AT&T and Google, and they got deals in place with the U.S. government. So in theory, it all sounds good. But realistically, again, there is no urgency here, right? We have to be honest. These first gen, which apparently are insignificant now since we're already on the next gen even though the first gen isn't launched yet but again transported to the launch site between july and august right so you got two to three months before they even get there then you then they have to launch them then they have to eventually somehow generate revenue off of them so you got two to three quarters in my opinion before the old generation satellites get launched and potentially start generating revenue now they're talking about the next gen potentially launching last month of 24 going into q1 of 25. so so in my opinion personally i still see no urgency here and i still see the ability for the share price to drop down the overall company value to decrease in my opinion so yeah believe it or not you know as much as uh, we say uh, a lot of brokers are like slip, slippery salesmen and they'll say anything i am being 110 percent honest i was in that category about 10 or 12 years ago and i'm telling you honestly i would not feel comfortable putting your money in asts but again that is just my opinion this is not financial advice but we're looking at a market cap here of 600 million and in my opinion it could go significantly lower and we can see here the losses getting wider and wider over the years we switch over quarterly of course they keep missing for uh four quarters in a row look at the cash here in 21 was almost 325 million then down to 239 down to 88 million for 2023 so in my opinion they better get those damn satellites launched soon otherwise they're going to go out of business but uh we can see here first of all the debt look at this 12 and a half million 17.75 18 and a quarter, almost 72, and then almost 73. And look at the cash, 239 million, 185, back up to 191 somehow, back down to 135 million, down to 88 million. So it seems like, again, they have. it seems like they really have to get these satellites launched inside of the next quarter or two because they might run out of cash. But 
we have, again, the cash decreasing, the debt increasing, looking at the assets and the liabilities. Yes, assets are outweighing liabilities, but total assets here about 350 million. And let's not even look at the equity, right? Assets minus liabilities yields total equity. Let's just look at the assets here. We have about 350 million. Company's got 88 million in cash. You know what? Let's call it 100 million. So now we're up to 450 million. Forget about subtracting the debt, right? Forget about that. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. And of course, we're not making any money. So with our assets, with our cash, we technically, in my opinion, have a fair value of 450 million. And again, we're being nice because we're not taking out the liabilities or the debt. So even if we look at it that way, that's about 25% less value than the current market cap of the situation. So in my opinion, I am expecting them to post a wider than expected loss. And whether they do or not, I mean, un unless they really say that all of a sudden now they're ahead of schedule and they're going to start rocking and rolling, you know, months before everyone thought. And, you know, th this time, three months from now, everything's going to be great. Unless they report something like that, chances are, in my opinion, they're probably going to report a loss wider than, than analysts expected. And over time, I see a 25% drop here from about 240 and change would be about a 60 cent drop per share, which would bring us to the high 170s, potentially low 180s. That is where I personally feel about the situation. Assets, uh, roughly 18 months ago, were 384. They were going up, but they were holding around that 400 million. Now we're down to 360 million. So assets technically dropped over this time frame here of about 25 million and change. Look at the liabilities, though, going from 74 and a half million, exploding in the last two quarters, jumping up to almost double that, almost 150 million. The equity was up here above 300 million multiple times and even holding the high 200s. Now it's down to 213 and a half million. So over this 18 month period as well, we had assets go down, liabilities double equity dropped by 33%, debt ran up roughly 4 or 500%, and book value lost uh, a very big chunk of value as well. 175 got up to 186 consistently ticking down. Now we're at $1.10. So again, in my opinion, also trading 2.29 times book value, we look at stocks that actually have stable or growing businesses, stocks that have stable or growing uh, operating margins, uh, uh, gross margin percentages. We look at these stocks and some of them are trading even less than one times book value or 1.2, 1.5 times book value. All this company is doing is literally burning millions of dollars, delaying the production, delaying the launch dates, getting sued by 18 firms, but they're trading over two and a quarter times book value. So uh, again, in my eyes, I mean, you know, it might not technically be the best way to look at it, but in my opinion, this, this stock can easily keep dropping down. And uh, I think it does. Uh, I think it does. And of course, supposedly generating 3.68 million, and then we're going to be off to the races. But again, we got delayed, it looks like, to here. So now instead of making 3.68 million, in my opinion, I mean, it sounds like they're not going to make any money. And now next quarter, Q2, if it does get launched here in between, right, maybe they can generate a couple of million, right? So now we're going to be, we're going to be like a quarter or two behind schedule, right? So now here on 14 million estimates, they might post 3 million and change. And then up here on 17 million, maybe they're, then maybe they're going to post like eight or like 10 million. And then here at 22, maybe they'll get up to 14 or 15 million, right? So in my, in my eyes, they're, they're behind schedule. I see no urgency. I see the ability for it to drop down. And of course, pending some amazing response today on, on this uh, earnings call, uh, in my opinion, the stock should go lower. It should not go higher. And uh, you can see support level at $1.80, MACD was climbing, but again, we're in this upward little consolidation zone, so in my opinion, we break down. RSI middle of the road 50, we switch over weekly, uh, RSI at 39, and we could also potentially make the argument that we have like a big drop here, maybe potential bear flag, but not really. But again, overall, in my opinion, you guys know I'm always honest with you. And I, I think, again, what I said about being a broker and whether I would bring this stock to you, I think that is honestly and truthfully the best way for someone to speak to you about a stock.
And again, even if I needed the commission dollars, I would not feel comfortable bringing you into ASTX. Because remember, I sign you up as a new client, you give me a shot as, as your advisor, I only have one chance to make to make a good first impression, right? And with a stock like this, like I said, if we go from 237 down to 177, chances are you're not going to be that excited about my next idea if I get you back on the phone. That's why I personally would not feel comfortable investing into this either with my money or with your money. But again, that's just my opinion. It's not financial advice. But in my opinion, down here to this FIB, 189 and uh, potentially even lower, in my opinion, I'm looking for about a 25% haircut from this level, pending what the company says, of course. But we'll keep an eye on it. And I'll end it there. So once again, stocks by the numbers. Thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comment section. I'm quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That's how you help me help you. More importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and very uncertain. I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.